Hey guys, Trip here once again. Today we're going to be doing a quick video on five reasons why you should write a book. Uh, I just want to talk about five reasons, like five kind of hidden benefits, I guess, to what you can gain from writing a book, kind of the side effects. Um, it's sort of a chicken and egg scenario where these benefits come from writing a book and being able to write a book is easier with because of these benefits, if that makes sense. So we're going to go through them pretty quick. All right, so with no further ado, let's get into the first point, which is going to be that writing is thinking. What do I mean by this? The act of writing and transcribing your thoughts into, you know, physical words, it's it's a difficult process that's not easy, and it's a skill that has to be developed on its own. Oftentimes, when we have thoughts in our head, they're very nebulous, vague ideas that sound amazing. For example, if you have a story, a fiction story in your head, it might sound perfect, but the reality is when you go to write it down, you're going to find flaws and things that you realize I had never thought about this part in detail. It was only a feeling. So writing is going to help you find these these flaws and weak spots and holes in your thinking, and it's going to help illuminate those to you. It's going to give you a chance to reflect and think about some of your beliefs, and the act of writing is really going to force you to formalize some of your thoughts. You know, this might not seem important at first, but having more definite and thorough thinking is only a good thing. It's only going to benefit you in other aspects of your life when you can properly think through situations with logic and not be jumping to conclusions. So for example, uh, people who journal, Journaling is a great way to, to think through some of the your thoughts and actions and to understand why you made the decisions you made and even what you choose to write down can be telling because those are the things that you're thinking about the most and you needed to think through and process. If we're talking about nonfiction, writing is a great way to reassess your thoughts and make sure that you know everything as well as you think you do. Um, they often say you have to know something really well to be able to teach it. Well, the same can be true for writing. If you, you can't really... It's hard to write well about something that you don't understand. So writing can be a great test to make sure that you really understand something as well as you think you do. And then going back to fiction, like before, if we're writing a story, it's a great way to understand other people and to understand our own emotions about life. Stories are often a, uh, a verisimilitude, a facsimile. Stories are like real life, but a little bit different. And they help us to understand real life by, by thinking it through with a story. And the same can be true for writing books. Maybe you, are really struggling with the philosophical topic and you let some of your characters explore that philosophical topic it's really going to give you a chance to argue it from both sides and arrive at your own conclusions on how you feel about certain things number two is going to be that writing takes discipline writing a book is something that you cannot do in a single day any book most books are at least fifty thousand words and you're not going to do that in one day unless you are on a lot of drugs <laughs> But the point being, most people cannot write books in a single day or even in a week or two weeks. Some people can do them in a month, but even those are often cases of quick, dirty, fast first drafts that aren't necessarily good. And they're still going to be going through countless revisions. And like for me, for example, I take three to four months to write a first draft typically. And some people it can take six months or a year. Or if you're Patrick Rothfuss, it can take a lifetime. <laughs> Just kidding. Um... <laughs> Uh, but the point being is that writing takes discipline to if you want to consistently put out books, you have to consistently write it. And that's a hard thing to do because writing is not exactly the most pleasurable activity. It's not as fun as going out with friends. It's not as fun as binging a movie. It's not as fun as a lot of things, but it is satisfying to do. And there's a lot of satisfaction to be found in the discipline of writing. Writing every day, uh, it feels like work every day. It's like a chore. Like even for me, where I'm doing writing as a career, it's it's work. I have to sit down and force myself to write. And if I don't make myself do it, it's not going to get done. That's discipline. Writing takes discipline, but with discipline comes great results. Over time, three, four, six months, eventually you'll have a product like a book to hold in your hand. And I can promise that holding the own, your own book that you wrote is a really good feeling. You can print the books without even publishing. Taking the time to force yourself to write every day, even though it sucks oftentimes, is very rewarding and valuable. And it's one of the beautiful things about writing. It's worth mentioning that the discipline you're going to be building from writing a book will also carry over into other aspects of your life. Having that presence of mind and discipline to do something every day, you start to realize you can apply that to more than one things. So musicians, for example, they don't get good at their instruments overnight. It's a discipline, you know, over X amount of years of playing this instrument, they're going to get good at it. And you can apply the same thing to really any skill. We can extrapolate into any skill you want to learn. Once you learn how to learn, you can learn 
and you realize most of learning is just the discipline of doing something consistently. Point number three is that writing helps develop empathy. This is particularly true for fiction stories, but I think it can be true for journaling and nonfiction too, uh, because even for those mediums for journaling, you are you know, building empathy with yourself and understanding yourself. And then for nonfiction, you're building empathy with a hypothetical reader who probably doesn't know as much as you know, and you're looking for ways to translate those ideas to them. And so all this being said, it's still, it holds true for fiction, of course, because fiction is largely about exploring other characters, who they are, why they think the way they think, and how they interact with different characters within the story. All of this is to say that writing fiction stories like that takes a ton of empathy and you really have to sit there and be able to think through what choices would this person make and then what kind of person would make these choices. You know, you have to look at it from both ends of how did this character get to where they are and how do I make sure the character goes where they truly would go. And these are these are hard skills to develop. I mean, I'm still still learning these and I'm not great at them and I'm trying to get better because it's a very difficult thing to do to create that facsimile of a human that is a character that feels like they have depth and all these things that humans have, but it's hard to do that because humans are complex and it's hard to capture all that complexity in words on a page. But trying to do it is a really great skill. It really helps you think about other people and you start to see even in real life situations, there'll be drama at work, but you're kind of able to look at it from both ends and well, I really understand where this person's coming from, but I also understand why that person did what they did. And sometimes it can help you navigate those situations better. It's sometimes it's better not to pick a side or sometimes it clearly is better to pick a side. Regardless, writing, I like to think it's played a small role, at least in my ability to help look at situations. And that being said, if there's weird situations in real life, you can explore them in your writing and take that as a chance to really explore all the different angles and to think about it. Really, writing is a great way to help us understand the world we live in and just kind of realizing we're all just a little piece of the human experience, you know. So number four, and it's this concept of what you want to do versus what you want to have done. This point is not entirely original, but it's so valuable, I have to bring it up. How you orient yourself in terms of what takes priority. If you're only worried about things you want to do, like I want to go get a drink, I want to go eat ice cream, I want to go do this, you're more prone to not accomplish that many amazing things because you're kind of entertaining a form of hedonism where you're really just seeking pleasure and and you're not really looking for fulfillment. Being pleasure focused has its place and this is one way to live and granted there's a lot of pleasure to be had in doing this but oftentimes some of the most meaningful and fulfilling things aren't very pleasurable to do in the moment. So like writing, for example, having a book to hold up and having, being able to say, I have written this book, I have done this, is a really fulfilling, satisfying feeling. Like it's, it feels like holding up a baby. It's like, I made this thing. But that being said, when I sit down to write most mornings, it's not that exciting. It's, but it is meaningful. It's still worth doing as most hard things are. Take for example, David Goggins, that dude runs like marathons. I don't even know the details, but he runs like crazy hard marathons. And that is hard. I guarantee you it is not pleasurable to run like that where you're getting shin splints and you're miserable and all that stuff. It's not pleasurable, but it is meaningful. And he gets p passion and fulfillment and purpose and all those things out of doing that activity. So this applies for writing too, is it's not that fun, but it's really fulfilling and meaningful to do and you get to say, I have written this book. I have written 10 books in my life. How many people get to say that? For me, this is something I, I wanna be able to say, I have written a book and I have published a book and I have written a good book is what I really wanna be able to say, right? And not everybody's like that, but for those of us who are, writing a book can be a really fulfilling experience. And it also kind of ties into my next point, point number five is legacy. So, you know, we're only going to be on this earth for like, what, 80 years on average, something like that, maybe 100 because technology is getting better. But 100 years isn't that long to be remembered by. But writing a book, well, that gives you a chance to really leave a mark and an impression of what mattered to you. You can't write 100,000 words about a story without leaving a little bit of yourself in it. And these books are a chance for you to live on in the memories of others and 
to me at least, books are one of the greatest ways to capture the um, like the inside of someone. Because pictures, sure, they capture the outside of what someone looks like, but they don't capture the internal mental state of someone the way a book can. Writing a book, it's almost inevitable that some of your philosophies and parts of who you are are going to seep into the book, whether subconsciously or consciously, whether visible in the surface or lurking in the depth of the themes of the book. It's going to be in there somewhere and it's going to be your chance to leave your mark on the world and to help translate some ideas to future humans out there, which is a pretty cool thing that you can't always do. I mean, look, we can say movies do the same sort of thing, but how many people get to make a movie and produce it and actually make the movie they want to make? Movies are expensive to make. Books, they cost a lot of time for one individual, but they are almost free as far as the money aspect goes. Just food for thought. Um, that's all for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, if you've got any any reasons that you've kind of hidden benefits you've gotten from writing, please feel free to add them. That's pretty much it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the video or leave me feedback, please. That's about it.